Today I want to talk to you guys about a recover and when a recover is appropriate. What we're doing here today is we're going to change out this roof. Wow, we're going to recover, so it means we're going to go on top of it. But there's a couple things we first need to do before we recover, and that is going to be looking for anything that's rotten. So we know there's like some soft spots around this vent here, so we got to open that up and figure out what's going on there. And that way we're not recovering over something that's rotten and then it falls apart underneath the roof. And then, you know, five years down the line, we have to recover it again or remove everything and start fresh. I don't love recovers, but I know they're necessary. Ypres shrinks 2% over its lifetime. And so if we left the drip edges on and we didn't secure it very well, this could potentially pull the edge away from our TPL and then uh, cause a leak. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off the drip edges, remove the cap, remove that boot, remove this vent and fix the plywood, and then look for any other damaged areas on the roof. The first thing we're gonna do here is rip out this vent and go ahead and see how bad the plywood really is in this section. That's our first step. Let's do it. It's cold this morning. It's very cold. I just cut off this vent and it was pretty easy. And uh, I guess we now know where the leak is. Bring you guys in for a little bit of a close up here so you guys can see what's going on. Let's see how bad this really is. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's, oh, that's pretty bad. That's not even, wow, okay. All right, what we're gonna do now is clean this out, clean it up and get it ready for some new plywood. At least now we know exactly where the leak was. So this is a, you know, obviously this vent is meant for a pitch roof, like on a shingle. So it would be like this direction if you had it mounted inside of the shingles. But since it was on the flat roof, it leaked. And the plastic, that will never be waterproof. So, the lesson here is uh, whoever installed this flat roof really was a residential roofer or a shingle roofer. And uh, they use shingle pipe boot. They use a regular shingle bathroom vent. And so, that's where all the problems come. When people don't know what they're doing. It's really not the material, it's more the quality of the install normally sometimes most of the time we've ripped up the fiberboard they had down as a cover board and we've exposed uh, somewhat of a repair there that they've done before and some really tiny itty bitty nails. That really is a tiny nail. That really, you guys even see that? That's tiny. They're all like that. Oh shit. That's like a one inch nail. One and a half inch nail. That's something. <laughs> Every single one is just like that. Wow. So now that we've exposed the plywood that was bad, we're gonna just rip off this area and then change out the plywood that was here and cut a new hole for the vent. So that's our next step. So now we're at the point where we can start putting in plywood. I know that uh, this plywood is half inch, but I'm gonna use a 5 8 plywood because it's a slight bit thicker and you'll never see it in the roof. And just gives it that little extra strength because that half inch really, like if you step on it, it bows. What we're gonna use to secure the plywood down is gonna be these, uh, these are two and three eighths rink shank nails. And you guys have seen me use these two and a half inch uh, GRK 10 by two and a half inch screws and they're wonderful. But when you're doing production work, you can't always use screws because it takes too long. Even though it's a better job, it takes so long that um, it almost doesn't make it feasible. You know, you can't make any money doing that. So we have to think production, but we also have to think like, uh, how can we up the quality? And what we're gonna do here to bridge the gap between a screw and a nail is gonna use a ring shank. So those little tiny grooves, I don't know if you guys can see that, those little tiny grooves on these nails is gonna act like as if it's a thread to hold it in a little better. And it bridges the gap a little better, even though screws are still better. This gives us the ability to um, bridge that gap a little bit and make our jo jobs a little bit easier and work a little quicker. And so we got our Milwaukee gun ready to go. I'm gonna bang these sheets in and then uh, we can start with the roofing process. Now we did discover there was a little bit more rot on the other side of the roof, right here. So obviously it looks like the wall has rotted a little bit. 
But since we have a two by four here that's pretty solid and a two by six here that's pretty solid, I think I'm just gonna run my plywood out a little further and get, a, get rid of a little bit of this, um, I think that used to be bed molding. So that's what we're gonna do now, change plywood, and then we can start the actual fun roofing, more of the roofing process. Now we're at the point where we can start installing the cover board because all the plywood's done. Now, I've nailed all the plywood six inches on center and I've cut a four inch hole for the vent because it's a three inch vent. And if they ever want to upgrade the vent, it'd be a lot of work to change it to a four inch. So I might as well do it to a four inch and let it flow a little easier. And then if they ever want to upgrade it, well, it's ready for it. Now, four inches on the outside perimeter with nails, six inches in the center. And we got this piece changed over here. And the reason I ran it out so long and none of the other sheets are run out that long is because the fascia was rotted here a little bit from leaking over the years. And the reason I run the plywood all the way to the edge is because I want to give us something to nail the drip edge to. And I also want to make it easier so if they ever do replace the fascia, they don't have to rip up the edge of the roof to do it. So that's my plan at least. We've gotten this far. Now it's time for us to cover board out. All right, guys, let's talk cover boards real quick. I just want to give you a brief overview. This is obviously not a video to talk only about cover boards because it'll be kind of boring, but if that's maybe in the future. What was used for a very long time that was really, really cheap is this fiber, it's this fiber board. And what it is is basically just fibers, like organic fibers, like tree fibers, put into a board, and then that's what they lay on top of a flat roof. So what I normally like is half inch ISO guard. So that's like a half inch 100 PSI ISO. And since we can't get that, we have to do the next best thing, which is a gypsum base cover board. And today we're using Georgia Pacific uh, Dens Deck. Um, and this is the half inch version. We normally use the quarter inch version on the walls. What this is, is really just a sheet of sheetrock that has a fiberglass facer on it. Now it's been damaged a little bit, but that gives you an idea of what it's like. Now, you can't use this on a wall inside of a building because it would take too long to finish to make it look nice. That's what we're gonna use to separate our roof from our plywood. And we have to do that because we're using nails this time. And also we have to match what's already there. So we're gonna go butt up right to that fiber board with our dens deck and lay it in and screw it down. And what we're using today, three inch screws and these three inch insulation plates to secure it down. And then we can put the roof on top of that and we're waterproof. Let's put the cover board. We're now at the part where we're able to put down the roof because we filled all the spots that have the, where the fireboard was completely deteriorated. We patched in the plywood and we also put some dense deck on top of it. So we have our hole ready to go. We have it secured around it a lot just so the member doesn't pull that uh, vent once we put it in. So now we're going to roll out our TPO. We're going to stretch it and then we're going to secure it. And that's where the fun's going to come. So let's get to putting out the material and I'll show you guys how we secure it down. Now we can talk about how we're gonna secure down this TPL since obviously we can't glue it directly to silicone or whatever coating has been put on this roof. So we're using these two and three eighths mechanically fastened screws and they have barbs on them. And the barbs pinch into the membrane so it can't slip away. And we secure them down every six inches on center. And we screw the whole entire length down. And then our next sheet is gonna come on top of it, covering up the screws and giving us somewhere to weld that's gonna be super secure. So that's our next step. Now we just gotta screw everything down. This is where the fun part happens because we, if we move quick, it goes quick. We're now at the point where everything's been screwed down. As you can see, this is what I was trying to explain before is that there's a ton of screws in there and then this gets welded right in front and it covers up all the screws and the whole thing is waterproof once we weld it. It's the next day. 
We ran out of time last night. It got too dark for us to keep on going. So we're back today to finish it off. And we've never been able to post a recover video because something has always gotten in the way and we weren't able to finish it. Sometimes rain hits, we come back a different day. We're not set up for like filming. But today is the day where we finish off this recover that we did in Norwalk. And we're just going to, we've already somewhat finished off some of it. So we've put the cover tape here to tie in the drip edge to the field membrane. And that's what that looks like. It's a good contrast, but so we put the primer down on both sides of it and then this sticks onto it and it doesn't come loose. And that's how you flash aluminum to TPL. Now we still have to do that around the entire perimeter. The bottom is done though. I think you guys have seen enough of this for now. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then guys, stay warm. <laughs>